Now, Deputy President David Mabuza says the land belongs to those who live on it and not to traditional leaders. He was in the National Assembly yesterday answering questions on land matters. He says the latest salvo in the conflict between the ANC and traditional leaders on the issue of land ownership. Now, uh, in studio to discuss this with us is Zolani Kiva. He is the Secretary General of the Congress of Traditional Leaders of South Africa. Thanks very much for coming into studio. Thank you, uh, before we start our discussion, perhaps let's just take a listen to what it is that Deputy President David Mabuza had to say in Parliament yesterday. Okay, granted. It is the people who own the land. Traditional leaders are only custodians of the people's land. Because of these perceptions and at times conf conflicting views on who has the right of ownership on such land between traditional leaders and ordinary people, Government then is seeking to address this issue in a manner that gives certainty and removes any possibility of unwarranted conflict and distortions. All right. What is your immediate reaction to what the Deputy President had to say? Well, it's very interesting, but I think that it's all about the interpretation and the correct uh, representation when it comes to the ownership of land and custodianship. Uh, you, you can't separate traditional leaders from the people and from the land. These are, two, these are intertwined. The institution of traditional leadership in Africa is an organ of people's power. And the traditional leaders uh, have the authority over their administrative uh, areas and they have full support of their communities and the people. Mm. And therefore it will be mischievous to try and separate traditional leaders from the people. Are you, are, are you saying that it's in fact the people who hand over this power to, to traditional leaders? There is no separation between the people and traditional leaders. That's the point I'm trying to say. The institution of traditional leadership is the organ of people's authority. Mm -hmm. A traditional leader is a leader by people and by land. So you can't draw a line between traditional leader and his own people. But I, I suppose that's exactly what the Deputy President is trying to do here. He's trying to draw that line. He says there have been a number of misconceptions and conflicting views on who has the right of ownership. I'm quoting here from the Deputy President's speech. Uh, there are at times conflicting views on who has a right of ownership of land between traditional leaders and ordinary people. The government then is seeking to address this issue. Who is confused? Because the people and traditional leaders are not confused. We are very clear that in so far as the communal land is concerned, it is under the leadership of traditional leadership. And they are the custodians. They are not only the custodians. They are part of the ownership of that land. And uh, they have been given that authority by the people to, to, to have an oversight of that land. And uh, they are not ceremonial leaders in so far as the land administration is concerned. And uh, communal land is not private land. And uh, communal land is public land. And therefore, it does not even fall in the category of what we are talking about now of expropriation without compensation. That land is not going to be touched. It is the land in the hands of Africans. And traditional leaders are part of those African leaders. This is the original leadership that fought the wars of dispossession. When traditional leadership was at the forefront of the wars of dispossession, they were doing that uh, on behalf of the people and with the support of the people, working closely with the people. And uh, when now we have defeated the colonial system, we do not need to be defined and described according to colonial ways. We know what the institution of traditional leaders is and what it represents. And therefore, that land in the hands of traditional leadership is not going to be touched in so far as expropriation. And everything that has to happen in that land is going to happen in consultation with traditional leadership. And traditional leadership has to give blessings to that. Uh, we are very clear on that. Uh, and therefore, it's neither here nor there. We don't think that the discussion should be about the land which is under the hands of traditional leaders. Because then we are diverting the issue. We are distorting the issue of expropriation without compensation. Because the land that we are talking about is the land that was stolen. 
The land under the stewardship of traditional leadership is not the stolen land. It is the land that is in the hands of Africans. And therefore, there is no need to talk about that. Let's talk about the stolen, la stolen land. We must not have a discussion. Now, we are confusing the debate and the discussion. And that's why I'm saying that this is becoming mischievous. Why did you think that the president thought it was necessary, uh, in his words, to clarify these misconceptions? I, I do not know. I, I don't want to, 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 to interpret what was going through uh, his mind in terms of wanting to clarify traditional leadership. And we must not be selective in terms of defining traditional leadership and only reduce it into custodianship because custodianship uh, in this context may be seen only as a ceremonial role. No, it is more than that in so far as the African culture is concerned. Custodianship means full authority, full administration, uh, executive powers in terms of administration. And traditional leader does not act in isolation from the people. That's why I'm saying that the institution of traditional leadership it is the organ of people's authority. And therefore, everything that a traditional leader does and what he represents, it, uh, it carries the aspirations of the people that he leads at all so, material so, terms. So where is this discussion now in terms of Contralesa and the government itself? Is there now an, a necessary dis discussion that needs to take place? Certainly, we need to have a discussion with the African National Congress, which is the ruling party. And uh, we think that if we have a discussion with the ANC, then the issue will be sorted out between ourselves and the ANC. But we are saying we must not allow ourselves as the African majority to be diverted from the key issue. Because even traditional leaders themselves have a claim to the land that was taken away from them. Now people want to talk about taking the little land that was left under their own jurisdiction, wherein we are still struggling to get back the land. What we want to see happening from this expropriation without compensation is for us to regain the land that was taken from us. Remember that all the entire landscape of South Africa uh, before the era of the colonial conquest, the entire landscape belonged and it was administered by the, people, the African people under the jurisdiction of traditional leadership. That's why all the wars of dispossession were led and fought uh, by the traditional leaders in defense of this land. When we were defeated, the land was taken forcefully against us. But in the final analysis, we are now a free country, and we want to say the land that was taken forcefully and stolen from us must be returned. So this one, the little one that we had, which forms only 30% and below, must not be touched, because that is rightfully ours. Now, now, now some analysis is saying that this is the latest salvo being fired, the statement by the Deputy President in Parliament, uh, calling it the ongoing conflict between the ANC and traditional leaders in terms of the land discussion. Uh, former President Halema Motlante uh, also angering uh, some traditional leaders, referring to them as, uh, a quote here again, tin pot dictators. Is this an ongoing feud between the ANC and traditional leaders? Well, I think uh, there may be some people who are fomenting a feud between the Congress of Traditional Leaders of South Africa and the traditional leaders in general and the ANC, and that is not supposed to happen. Remember that the ANC itself uh, was born under the stewardship of traditional leadership. So it would be wrong for the ANC to make pronouncements about the land question without talking to the traditional leadership. Then if they do that, they will be setting themselves up for failure. We mu they must be careful of doing that. They must not proceed on this issue because now already there are issues that are coming up of misunderstanding. And how involved has Contralesa been in this discussion around land expropriation without compensation? Well, we have had an opportunity uh, to deliberate on the matter during the ANC conference in Nazareth. Beyond that, we haven't had an interaction with the ANC. We have written letters to the ANC to say that we need to meet, to discuss. We are awaiting uh, for a response and a date at which we must talk about this. That's why I'm saying that going ahead and make public pronouncement, we need uh, to present a united front in so far as the land question. Because our struggle predominantly for freedom was about gaining back the lost land, the land that was taken forcefully from us by people of European origin. 
That's what we need to be talking about. We must not beat about the bush here and confuse the issue and allow ourselves to be divided because if we are, divide, we are divided, we're going to end up being defeated on this project of retaining our land. Uh, this, is, this is the main thrust of why we went into war uh, against colonialism. So, Lanim Kiva, I think we need another hour or so to continue to unpack this discussion, but thanks very much Thank uh, you, for Thank your time. You thanks for coming in. The Secretary General of the, con uh, the, the Congress of Traditional Leaders of South Africa joining us in studio in the wake of the Deputy President's utterances uh, in Parliament.